Have you ever wondered how Steven Seagal, with his limited acting range and notorious ego, became a massive star in the late 80s and early 90s? Despite his unconventional style, he was once one of the biggest action heroes in the world. During his heyday, he rubbed shoulders with prolific A-listers and character actors who have vivid tales of his outrageous and occasionally violent behavior on set. But that's not all. Seagal also found himself facing off against both the Mafia and the formidable Vladimir Putin. Join us in today's video as we delve deep into the untold truth of Steven Seagal. Early Life Born on April 10, 1952, Steven Seagal was raised in the beautiful town of Lansing, Michigan. His mom, Patricia Ann Fisher from an Irish background, was a medical technician, while his dad, Samuel Siegel, was a mathematics teacher from Jewish roots. During an interview on the Russian talk show Let Them Talk, Siegel shared that he discovered he had ancestors from Vladivostok, Siberia, Belarus, and St. Petersburg through genetic testing. He also found out that he has Yakut and Buryat ancestry. When Siegel turned five, his family moved to Fullerton, California. His mom later revealed in an interview with People magazine that before the move, Stephen was a frail child who suffered from asthma. However, after relocating to California, Stephen flourished and became healthier. Subsequently, he attended Buena Park High School in Buena Park, California, and later attended Fullerton College between 1970 and 1971. However, it is worth noting that Siegel has been labeled as a pathological liar due to his tendency to make exaggerated or completely false claims about his personal life and accomplishments. One example of this is his claim of being a student of the founder of Aikido, Morihai Ueshiba. According to reports, Ueshiba died in 1969 when Seagal was only 17 years old. Subsequently, Seagal moved to Japan at the age of 22, several years after Ueshiba's death. So, you could see the discrepancy between these facts. Meanwhile, there are reports that suggest he moved to Japan to avoid being drafted for the Vietnam War by marrying a Japanese national. Difficulty with colleagues When it comes to working with others, Steven Siegel has gained quite the reputation for being a difficult colleague. There have been numerous accounts of his problematic behavior on set that have left his co-stars frustrated and even physically intimidated. During the filming of Executive Decision, Siegel's boiling temper got the better of him. It is said that he became so furious with his co-star, John Leguizamo, that he allegedly shoved him against a wall. This incident showcases the intensity and aggression that Siegel sometimes brought to his working relationships. Siegel didn't just clash with his fellow actors, but also faced troubles while hosting Saturday Night Live in 1991. According to Tim Meadows, Siegel was highly critical of the cast and writing staff. He failed to understand that insulting someone's intelligence on a Wednesday doesn't exactly foster a conducive environment for writing comedy sketches by Saturday. David Spade, who was a cast member on the show for six years, described Siegel as the worst host they ever had. It seems Siegel's taste in comedy didn't align with the comedic genius of the show. In fact, his ideas were so inappropriate that he was banned from hosting again. Julia Sweeney revealed that Siegel wanted to perform a sketch in which he played a therapist who wanted to sleep with a rape survivor. Clearly, his lack of understanding of appropriate boundaries led to his downfall on Saturday Night Live. In the movie The Glimmer Man, Stephen Tobolowski played a serial killer that Siegel's character was supposed to defeat. However, Siegel suddenly decided that it went against his karma to keep killing people on screen. Thinking on his feet, Tobolowski managed to salvage the scene by explaining that his character was trapped in his own personal hell. By killing the villain, Siegel would actually be freeing him to reincarnate as a more peaceful being. Surprisingly, Siegel agreed to the alternative storyline, and the scene proceeded as planned. But here comes the twist. Siegel ad-libbed a line later on, saying, Thank God I didn't kill that guy. This unexpected addition forced Tobolowski to record additional lines in order to create the illusion that his character had miraculously survived, like a villain in a bad horror movie. Although Tobolowski made the effort, unfortunately, these lines did not make it into the final cut of the film, leaving audiences confused. Reincarnation Controversy Among the ranks of Buddhist celebrities like Richard Gere and Keanu Reeves, 
Siegel has made a name for himself with his devotion to Aikido and his unique spiritual beliefs. However, his rise to the top has faced its fair share of criticism, particularly from fellow believers. In 1997, Panor Rinpoche, the revered supreme head of the Nyingma school of Tibetan Buddhism, made a surprising announcement. He claimed that Seagal was a tolku, a reborn Buddhist master who had made a sacred vow to return to the world to assist others in attaining enlightenment. According to Rinpoche, Seagal had been Chungdrag Dori, a translator who established a monastery and discovered invaluable relics during the 17th century. Based on this intriguing spiritual resume, Siegel was bestowed the title of Lama, placing him just below the esteemed Dalai Lama himself. In his inauguration, Siegel pledged to alleviate suffering globally, and he furthered this mission by giving compassion seminars at New Age retreat centers. Despite the grand titles and lofty promises, skeptics abound. Siegel's moral character has come under scrutiny due to accusations of harassment. This has led many to question whether he truly embodies the values of a spiritual leader. Making people doubt more, some say Siegel gave a lot of money to Rinpoche's school before saying he was a tulku. This makes people wonder if he made up his past life. One peculiar thing is the fact that traditionally, these reincarnated teachers are discovered as young children rather than in adulthood, as in Seagal's case. Weird relationship with the ultimate fighting championship. The night of February 2011 was one that Ultimate Fighting Championship fans will never forget. On that day, Anderson Silva, the reigning middleweight champion, faced off against Vitor Belfort. This bout was highly anticipated, as Silva was widely regarded as the best mixed martial artist in the world. In a stunning display of skill, Silva knocked out Belfort in the first round with an unforgettable front kick to the face. It was a moment etched in Ultimate Fighting Championship history. What happened next, however, added a bizarre twist to the tale. Just days after the fight, Steven Siegel claimed credit for teaching Silva that knockout kick. He even went so far as to say he invented the kick himself. While many skeptics rolled their eyes at Siegel's grandiose claims, it was hard to ignore the fact that he had been in the ring with Silva that night, as his trusted companion. Surprisingly, this was not the only time Siegel took credit for a knockout kick. In a later Ultimate Fighting Championship event, the legendary Randy Couture was knocked out by Lyoto Machida, who executed what appeared to be a Karate Kid-inspired crane kick. Once again, Seagal shamelessly claimed responsibility for the move during an appearance on Jimmy Kimmel Live. While Silva initially chuckled at Seagal's claims, the champ eventually set the record straight. He clarified that he had been practicing that kick long before he ever met Seagal, and even went further to acknowledge the fact that Seagal is a good man. However, not all athletes have been as forgiving as Silva. When Seagal tried to enter the backstage area of Ultimate Fighting Championship 135 to offer advice to light heavyweight champion John Jones, he was abruptly turned away. Ronda Rousey, the fierce MMA fighter, boldly declared that she could easily beat the crap out of the actor. Seagal even challenged the respected Randy Couture, a two-time ex-champion to a fight. When asked about the potential matchup, Couture dryly remarked that he wasn't surprised Siegel wanted the fight to happen in a private, remote location where nobody could see it. That's quite hilarious, though, looking at the aspect that he was trying to mock Seagal. Appearance on James Bond film, Seagal has done quite a bit of fight choreography. While the majority of the films he has worked on were his own creations, there was a time in the early 80s when Seagal lent his expertise to the iconic James Bond franchise. Seagal found himself collaborating on the Bond film Never Say Never Again, where he had the privilege to teach martial arts to none other than the legendary Sean Connery himself. Despite already being well-versed in karate, Connery needed to learn the art of Aikido for his seventh portrayal as the suave spy. Seagal took on the responsibility of imparting his knowledge to Connery, and taught him how to gracefully throw opponents and manipulate their joints. Initially, everything seemed to be going smoothly during their training sessions. As Connery candidly admitted, he felt a bit overconfident, thinking he had a solid grasp of the techniques being taught to him. However, one fateful day, Siegel's irritation allegedly got the better of him. He reportedly grabbed Connery's arm in a moment of frustration, 
unknowingly causing the esteemed actor to suffer a broken wrist. Remarkably, Connery's determination pushed him to continue training, completely oblivious to the fact that his wrist had been broken until many years later in the late 90s. It was undoubtedly a slow healing injury that Connery endured without realizing the extent of the damage. Yet, it is important to remember that Seagull is no stranger to pain himself. During the production of his breakout film, Above the Law, he experienced firsthand the physical toll of his craft. Actor Henry Silva, in the heat of the moment, accidentally struck Seagull with an overly enthusiastic punch, resulting in a broken nose. However, Siegel understood the show must go on. He spent a sleepless night, diligently icing his battered face, and he strived to continue shooting the following day. Showdown with the Dirty Dozen During his prime, Steven Siegel stood as Hollywood's reigning martial arts star, captivating audiences with his on-screen prowess. Yet, the question remained, could Siegel hold his own in a real fight? Armed with a seventh Dan in Aikido, an art focused on joint locks and redirecting momentum, Seagull made history as the first American to teach Aikido in Japan. However, Aikido's practicality and self-defense was questioned by experts like Jack Slack, who deemed it effective only when facing oncoming attacks. A rarity in skilled combat situations, as Ultimate Fighting Championship commentator Joe Rogan pointed out. Undeterred by critics, Seagull boldly proclaimed his ability to conquer any adversary anytime, anywhere. His arrogance was further fueled by contentious remarks aimed at martial arts legends such as Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris, as well as disparaging full-contact karate. This boastful attitude rubbed Bob Wall, a respected actor and black belt with ties to Norris and Lee, the wrong way. Determined to humble Seagal, Wall orchestrated the formation of the Dirty Dozen, a coalition comprising elite kickboxing and karate champions, including the likes of Benny Urquidez, Bill Wallace, and Howard Jackson. Their motives varied. Some sought to unmask Seagal, while others aimed to avenge stuntmen purportedly injured by the action star. To catch Seagal's attention, the Dirty Dozen garnered media coverage in prominent magazines like Preview and Black Belt, amplifying anticipation for a potential confrontation that never materialized. When the long-awaited meeting between Seagal and Wall finally occurred, the Hollywood star reportedly extended an apology for his contentious remarks, signaling a truce in the simmering feud, the time Steven Seagal got choked out. While the Dirty Dozen never had the opportunity to face off against Steven Seagal, there are reports that Seagal once locked horns with the renowned judo Jean LaBelle. A stalwart of the martial arts world, LaBelle immersed himself in various forms of combat, from taekwondo to boxing, excelling in judo and jiu-jitsu. As a two-time national heavyweight judo champion, LaBelle served as Bruce Lee's grappling instructor and trained Ultimate Fighting Championship icon Ronda Rousey. In 1963, LaBelle made history by competing in the first televised mixed martial arts fight in America, where he showcased his ground game aptitude against boxer Milo Savage. LaBelle also boasted an impressive resume in the film industry, featuring in over a thousand television shows and movies as an actor and stuntman. During his tenure as the fight choreographer for Out for Justice, an action movie starring Seagal, the Aikido master purportedly declared that he was immune to submission techniques, claiming that he possessed a special ability that prevented anyone from choking him out. LaBelle, never one to back down from a challenge, immediately accepted. Before anyone knew it, the two were grappling, and LaBelle caught Siegel in a rear naked choke, a move that forces an opponent to submit or risk passing out. Siegel, undeterred, deployed his supposed secret move, striking LaBelle's groin with a devastating karate blow. However, the low blow was not enough to break LaBelle's hold, and Siegel quickly passed out. To add to the catastrophe, according to LaBelle, Siegel had a rather embarrassing response to losing consciousness, making a mess on set. While Siegel denies the fight ever happened, the godfather of grappling insists that Siegel was anything but invincible. Encounter with the Mob While Siegel may have battled all sorts of bad guys on the silver screen, from terrorists to the Yakuza, he has also faced some villains in real life, like the Mafia. In the 1990s, Siegel collaborated with producer Julius Nasso, delivering a string of successful movies. 
However, their partnership soured in 2000, leading to unexpected consequences when the notorious Gambino crime family entered the scene. On an eventful day, Siegel found himself escorted to a restaurant in Brooklyn, where he encountered Anthony Sonny Sicconi, an alleged captain in the Gambino family. Shockingly, Sicconi demanded that Seagull resume working with Nasso and fork over a staggering $150,000 for each film he made. Feeling shaken, Siegel reluctantly handed over a colossal sum of $700,000 to the mobsters. The martial artist had every right to fear for his safety. As he left the meeting, a chilling remark lingered in his ears. If you had said the wrong thing, they would have killed you. The scandal finally came to light in 2003 when the government indicted Peter Gotti, the alleged mastermind of the crime family, along with 16 others, for a myriad of criminal activities. Siegel's testimony, coupled with incriminating recordings of conversations among the individuals involved, including Sicconi and Nasso, provided undeniable evidence of their intentions to intimidate the movie star. The audio tapes even captured their laughter at how successfully they had frightened Seagull. Nasso attempted to justify his actions, claiming that Seagull had reneged on multiple movie deals, resulting in a debt of $500,000. Nevertheless, Nasso was sentenced to one year in federal prison. Seeking retribution, he sued Seagull for a staggering $60 million. Eventually, after Nasso's release, the two parties reached a confidential settlement. Encounter with the Federal Bureau of Investigation During the peak of his career, Steven Siegel used to pull in some impressive box office numbers. But these days, his films go straight to video on demand. So what happened to Siegel's career? You might be surprised to hear that he places the blame squarely on the Federal Bureau of Investigation. It all started back in 2002, when Los Angeles Times reporter Anita Bush began investigating Seagull in connection with Julius Nasso. One fateful morning, Bush walked out to her car and discovered a shocking scene on her windshield. There, she found a dead fish, a single rose, and a foreboding sign that read, Stop! As if that wasn't enough, a fresh bullet hole had pierced her windshield, leaving her terrified for her safety. Fearful and unsure of who to turn to, Bush made the brave decision to inform the FBI about the incident. The agents wasted no time launching an investigation into Siegel and suspected him of hiring a notorious detective named Anthony Pelicano to intimidate Bush. Additionally, they believed Siegel may have gone so far as to employ a thug to scare Vanity Fair writer Ned Zeman with a loaded gun. However, as the Federal Bureau of Investigation delved deeper into the matter, they soon discovered that the evidence against Seagull was lacking. Instead, their focus shifted to Pelicano, a shady private eye known for illegally spying on celebrities. While they never charged Seagull, they also didn't offer him full exoneration, leaving a cloud of suspicion hanging over his head. This notoriety stemming from the Pelicano case dealt a significant blow to Seagull's career, according to insiders in Hollywood. As one well-known publicist put it, Steven Siegel was no Harrison Ford when this scandal unfolded, but these accusations certainly hastened his decline. Given the impact on his reputation and career, it only makes sense that Seagull wants an apology from the Federal Bureau of Investigation. So what do you think about that? His love for blues music. Seagull's hands aren't just for breaking people's bodies. They're also for making cool music. Apart from being an actor, he is also an accomplished musician and guitarist. Specifically, he loves the blues genre and has been playing the guitar since he was just 12 years old. In fact, Seagull heads a blues band called the Steven Seagull Blues Band and has even released an album. Seagull's album, called Songs from the Crystal Cave, was released in 2005, many years after the actor began his musical journey. The album has a classic blues sound, but is not nearly as raw and emotional as that of legendary blues artists like B.B. King, Buddy Guy, or John Goodman. Reviews of the album have been mixed, with some critics calling it a strange and bizarre listen. Despite the mixed reviews, Siegel's music speaks for itself. If you are curious about what his unique sound is like, check out some of his songs. One track is called Music, which although the name is self-explanatory, could barely be considered music at all. Another song, Girl It's Alright, is a bit more mellow, 
and could be likened to an early Jack Johnson track. Finally, there is Jealousy, a song which has an interesting lyric about a hungry ghost. While Siegel might be more famous for his acting career, his love for music, and blues in particular, is just as much of a fascinating aspect of his life. Seagull's Insane Raid In addition to his love of blues music and ornate saddles, Seagull also has fascination with law enforcement as well. For 20 years, Siegel served as a police officer in Jefferson Parish, Louisiana, but his cop career didn't stop there. In 2009, Siegel took his love for law enforcement to the silver screen with his own reality show, Steven Siegel Lawman. But things got even wilder in the third season, when Siegel teamed up with none other than Sheriff Joe Arpaio, the controversial figure from Maricopa County, Arizona. Arpaio was famous for his media antics, so it was no surprise when Siegel arrived with cameras in tow that a grand show was about to unfold. Arpaio, known for his flair for the dramatic, decided to orchestrate a raid against a local resident, Jesus Lovera, who was suspected of being involved in cockfighting. But this raid wasn't your typical search warrant. It was an extravaganza of epic proportions. As the raid commenced, an army of law enforcement descended upon Lovera's property. Chaos ensued as parts of Lovera's house were damaged, and even the gates to his property were torn down by Siegel's formidable tank. When the dust settled, Lovera found himself in custody. But that's when things took a truly bizarre turn. You won't believe what happened next. Lovera owned over 100 roosters. And what did the law enforcement officials, including Siegel, decide to do? In a move that raised eyebrows, they made the shocking decision to euthanize all of the roosters. As if that wasn't heartbreaking enough, Lovera claimed that the police also killed his innocent 11-month-old puppy. Unsurprisingly, Lovera was furious and filed a lawsuit against the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, demanding an apology from Seagal himself. However, the lawsuit came to an abrupt end when Lovera pleaded guilty to the charges related to cockfighting. The dramatic Arizona raid never made it to television, leaving us to ponder the incredible series of events that unfolded that fateful day. His close relationship with Putin. While most people view Putin as a bully, dictator, and violator of human rights, Seagal sees things differently. In fact, he considers Putin to be not just a great world leader, but perhaps the greatest leader alive today. The bond between them goes beyond mere admiration, as Seagal refers to the ex-committee for state security agent as a friend and a brother. What sets Seagal apart is his unwavering support for Putin, particularly when it comes to his actions towards Ukraine, which he deems very reasonable. While there are other celebrities who support Putin, such as Mickey Rourke and Gerard Depardieu, Seagal's relationship with the Russian president is truly unique. Their connection dates back to 2003, when they first met at the Moscow Film Festival. It's not surprising that they hit it off considering their shared love for martial arts. Putin, being an eighth-degree black belt in judo, must have found a kindred spirit in Seagal. They began dining together, visiting dojos, and even joined forces to promote old Soviet exercise programs. Together, they even paid a visit to the Russian judo team as they prepared for the 2012 Olympics. In an interesting turn of events, Putin requested President Obama to appoint Siegel as an honorary consul of Russia in 2015. This would have allowed Siegel to act as a mediator between the two countries. However, it didn't take long for Obama to veto the idea, recognizing the potential complexities such a role would bring. Nevertheless, Siegel continues to make frequent visits to Russia. While he may not be engaged in covert political activities, he certainly leaves his mark. Seagal has delighted Russian crowds with Aikido demonstrations and explored the famed factory that produces Kalashnikov rifles. Also, he has participated in a parade commemorating the 70th anniversary of the Nazi surrender to the Soviet Union and even played a concert for pro-Russian separatists in the Crimean Peninsula. His love for animals. Despite his reputation for bone-breaking action, Siegel reveals a surprisingly gentle and compassionate side when it comes to pets. In fact, he embraces vegetarianism and believes in using his influence to shame companies into making positive changes. Siegel sees himself reflected in all creatures, recognizing the interconnectedness of life. As he eloquently puts it, When I walk into a room, 
Some people may see a dog, and others may see a cow. I am all they see. It is their perception. Siegel's dedication to animal welfare is truly commendable. In 1999, he embarked on a mission to put an end to South Africa's export of baby elephants to Japan, successfully pressuring the government to cease this practice. For his relentless efforts, Siegel was honored with a People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals Humanitarian Award. Moreover, in a further display of compassion, he wrote to the Thai government four years later, urging them to stop the mistreatment of baby elephants. According to his website, Siegel claims he single-handedly facilitated a remarkable change in Thailand. Not stopping there, he also sought to shame India into treating cows more ethically. One can only speculate if this influenced the career choices of his friend Rob Schneider, who starred in the movie The Animal. However, the most captivating aspect of Siegel's connection to animals lies in his encounters with soothsaying creatures. During an interview with People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, Siegel shared a remarkable story from his early days as a young Aikido learner in Japan. A white dog greeted him and after a few days started barking intensely at Seagull, seemingly communicating a message of imminent danger. Incredibly, Seagull's dojo was indeed on fire and that prompted him to swiftly extinguish the flames. The dog vanished thereafter, never to bark again. People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals found this tale of a magical emotional support dog so compelling that they honored Seagull with a humanitarian award. Harassment and Assault Allegations Throughout his career in films, Steven Seagull has faced numerous allegations of harassment and assault. Shocking images emerged showing Seagull groping a 16-year-old Katherine Heigl during a filming session. In 1991, actress Rayenne Malone who was working as Siegel's assistant on the movie Out for Justice, along with three other women, accused him of harassment on set. Warner Brothers settled the matter by paying each woman $50,000. Incidents in 1994 involving optician Cheryl Schumann and in 2010 with model Caden Nguyen briefly grabbed media attention, but no legal consequences followed. Fortunately, in 2017, the Hash Me Too movement shed light on the culture of abuse and exploitation within the entertainment industry and exposed serial predators who had hidden their misdeeds behind their wealth and power. Suddenly, the year's worth of allegations against Seagull could no longer be ignored. Actors like Portia de Rossi shared their horrifying experiences of facing demands on casting couches, while model Faviola Dadis and actor Regina Simons came forward with allegations of rape against Seagal. In 2018, the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office launched an investigation into Dadis and Simons' claims, but no charges were filed. To date, over a dozen women have accused Seagal of committing various sex crimes. His controversial legacy. When we analyze Steven Seagal's legacy in the 21st century, we find ourselves confronted with various intriguing facets. First and foremost, the past two decades have witnessed him lazily churning out a series of forgettable direct-to-video films, each blending into the next with no distinguishing features. Secondly, he has been a vocal, if not blindly supportive, advocate for Russian President Vladimir Putin and his controversial endeavors, including the contentious 2014 annexation of Crimea and the 2022 invasion of Ukraine. Lastly, Siegel's persona has evolved into a parody of himself, reaching a point where any headline bearing his name, no matter how outrageous, feels somewhat believable. February 2022 serves as the pinnacle of this collision of elements. During this time, a fabricated article began circulating, falsely claiming that Siegel had enlisted in the Russian Special Forces and was stationed in Kyiv, Ukraine. The hoax gained tremendous traction, even receiving support from comedian-turned-podcaster sensation Joe Rogan. Rogan took the bait, sharing the story on his Instagram, complete with a still photo of Seagull in military attire from his 2016 film, Cartels. To his credit, Rogan swiftly removed the post and admitted his mistake. However, he couldn't resist adding a caveat to his apology, stating, It wouldn't be surprising if it was true. Overall, Siegel's legacy continues to be a mix of peculiarities and paradoxes, leaving us with a lasting impression of a man who constantly blurs the lines between reality and the realms of the absurd. Thank you for watching this video. 
See you in the next one.